This always feels dangerous, like I'm gonna drop it on my head. Whoa, okay. Okay, overall that could have been a lot worse. <clears throat> Goodness. Hey everyone, Mercy here and welcome back to another video. Today I have another classic booktube video for you. Um, I do feel like we're kind of diving into a bunch of classic videos at the moment, um, given that I'm kind of working my way back into the bookish content. But today I have a book haul for you. Now I realized that just like a couple of videos ago, I said that I was feeling slightly overwhelmed by my own TBR uh, and that I was really trying not to buy more books until I had cleared some out. But... <laughs> But hear me out. I was at the library picking up a hold and the way my library is set out, you walk in, the holds are on one side and then like the library used bookshop is on the other side. Now, thankfully this day the bookshop was closed, but they had a giant sign outside saying, don't forget like semi-annual book sale uh, coming up next weekend. And I thought, well, darn. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the book buying ban. However, given that I wasn't actually on a formal book buying ban and given that I got all of these, like seven books I have here. Why did I use that syntax? That was weird. The seven books that I have here to show you today, I got for just $3, okay? They give you a bag, they set you loose amongst all their books and they say, whatever you can fit in the bag, you get it for $3. So it would have been illegal, technically, <laughs> as a reader to have passed up that opportunity. So anyways, let's get into it. My library has this book sale about twice a year. And while I don't go to every single one, I do try and go when I can, um, especially because over the last couple of years, I really feel like they have started to really grow their collection of like more contemporary or non mass market paperback style fiction. And actually, I don't know if other readers get this way as well, but uh, prior to going to this book sale, I was having this real craving for a nice used super well-worn mass market paperback. Um, so this book sale I think came around at the exact right time. I should also say that this video is going to be relatively low on substance as I have not yet read any of these books and therefore don't know a lot about them. But you know, you you know how hauls work. Now, the first book that I picked up was a John Le Carre novel. This is Smiley's People. And as I understand it, this is like pretty far down the list of uh, George Smiley books. I wanna say there's like four or five in the loose series. Uh, so I do think I will probably need to check out some like RA from the library before I can like dive straight into this one just for general world and character context. Now I've never read like RA before. However, I am currently in the middle of the Slow Horses um, series by McCarran, which is kind of being heralded as the modern day Le Carre series. So I'm, I'm hoping that means that I like this as much as I'm enjoying the McCarran books. This book sale tends to be pretty heavy on mystery and light on fantasy. So having said that, I was very pleased to find a copy of The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, which is of course kind of a cult fantasy favorite, I guess. Now this also totally scratches my weird craving for like a battered paperback because it's like loose, the spine's already been broken, smells like a musty old book, beautiful. Oh, I'm sorry, there are crows cavorting is that the word i want to use outside my window what is going on you've been quiet all day and now i don't know much about the actual plot of the name of the wind i do know that this is something that i feel like most people who are into fantasy have read at this point so i definitely don't know when i will be picking this one up but i have been on the lookout for like a decent used copy for a while uh so you know, we will we will explore this chunky monster at some point. Then I did pick up my fair share of mysteries, starting off with a ton of French novel, In the Woods. Now this sounds like it starts off in uh, 1984 in Dublin uh, with a, a young boy being found at the scene of like some kind of a crime. And then 20 years later or so, we pick up with him as our main character, a detective. So naturally, I was very intrigued by this. Um, I also realized I've never read anything by Tana French, uh, but I've heard very good things about her and uh, was very excited to find just like a completely pristine copy of this book. Now, I'm not normally super precious with my books. I, like I said, love the look of a cracked spine, musty, dusty pages. It just shows that a book's had a great life. However, when you do have the opportunity for $3 to pick up a pristine copy of something, um, aside from this unsightly little printed on uh, sticker, you know, you can't go wrong with that. I would also say that this is a weird size book. It's not quite a mass market paperback because it's, 
I guess technically categorically it probably is, but because it's a little bit taller and it's this weird like short, it's like um not it's not got the width of a typical book. Um it, this makes me think this was probably like an airport book, if you will. Have you ever done that where you've been trapped in a terminal and you've either run out of battery on your Kindle or you realized you forgot your paperback at home? and you have to go to like a newsstand to pick up a book, I swear they're all this like weird, awkward size. Carrying on with the mystery, I picked up a copy of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson. Now this is of course the first book in the Elizabeth Salander series, and I have actually read this uh, before and absolutely loved it. I do actually already own a copy, but I have moved that to my like to donate pile because that was a mass market paperback and it did not match the other editions of volumes two and three on my shelves. So this fits nicely on my shelves. It looks like a complete set now. And um, that that like matchy matchiness just make my brain very happy. I would just say that I am absolutely never able to describe what this book is about. I would say though that if you are into like European mystery, um, if you are into like dark twisted family drama mixed with like gritty underworld mixed with kind of sort of detective fiction, you might really like this. Um, and that's all I have to say on the matter. <laughs> Then this next book here I think is probably a bit mystery, a bit psychological thriller, and that is The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. McMahon. Um, I should have practiced that before filming this video. Now this sounded fascinating to me because one, it's got this gorgeous cover, um, which unfortunately somebody looked like took an X-Acto blade to. So I have taped it up with some packing tape here, but this just sounded fascinating to me. So I wanted to read you the back cover. West Hall, Vermont has always been a town of strange disappearances and old legends. The most mysterious is, of, is that of Sarah Harrison Shea, who in 1908 was found dead in the field behind her house just months after the tragic death of her daughter. Now in the present day, 19-year-old Ruthie lives in Sarah's farmhouse with her mother, Alice, and her younger sister, Fawn. Fawn has always insisted that they live off the grid, a decision that has weighty consequ consequences when Ruthie wakes up one morning to find that Alice has vanished. In her search for clues, she is startled to find a copy of Sarah Harrison Shea's diary hidden beneath the floorboards of her mother's bedroom. As Ruthie gets sucked into the historical mystery, she discovers that she's not the only person looking for someone they've lost but she may be the only one who can stop history from repeating itself. I don't know why I put such weird emphasis on that last sentence. So this sounds absolutely fantastic. And quite frankly, there's something inherently spooky about the East Coast to me, especially about like New England. I don't know if it's because I spent high school and college reading way too much Nathaniel Hawthorne, but there is just something inherently spooky about this whole setting um, and I'm really looking forward to getting into this at some point. I also just wanted to say that I think the cover resemblance here <laughs> is a little uncanny. I did I did at one point stop to just make sure I hadn't gotten two copies of the same book before I checked out of the sale. Then I did get some historical fiction. Uh, this is The Sealed Letter by Emma Donahue. Now I did look up Emma Donahue to confirm that she is in fact the same author of the book Room, which was of course adapted into the uh, film adaptation starring Brie Larson. Now this uh, is Victorian uh, historical fiction. So I'm quite excited about this one. And I do just want to read you the back of this because it also sounds um, twisty turny. Miss Emily Fido Faithful is a woman of business and a spinster pioneer in the British women's movement, independent of mind, but naively trusting of heart. Distracted from her cause by the sudden return of a once dear friend, the unhappily wed Helen Codrington, Fido is swept up in the intimate details of he Helen's failing marriage and obsessive affair with a young army officer. What begins as a loyal effort to help a friend explodes into an intriguing courtroom drama complete with accusations of adultery, counterclaims of rape, and a mysterious letter that could destroy more than one life. Based on a scandalous divorce case that gripped England in 1864, The Sealed Letter is a riveting, provocative novel of friends, lovers, and divorce Victorian style. As I was reading the back of this, it already sounded fantastic. And then you get to that part where it says it's based off of a real divorce case and sign me up, sign me up. Also another really great conditioned copy. Did that make sense? Another copy in fantastic condition. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, I got one hardcover. I don't typically pick up hardcovers. One, because I don't really enjoy 
reading hardcovers. I find them cumbersome because I like to do a lot of reading whilst laying down. It's just a little bit harder, you know, to hold these over your head. Um, but this one was an author I recognized and I think probably just a library book that they were trying to decommission and get rid of. This is Life Class by Pat Barker and she is the author of the Regeneration Trilogy which I do own in, in its entirety and I'm planning to get to in the very near future. The Regeneration Trilogy is um, set in and around World War One, following I believe two different families from two different perspectives, uh, two different families of soldiers, I should say. This also sounds like it's set in and around World War I, but it uh, follows um, a volunteer for the Belgian Red Cross. So I think a slightly different spin on World War I than she uh, previously has written about. Every so often I get in this weird World War I and or two rut where all I want to read and learn about is that time period. So I feel like this is just a really safe bet to have on my bookshelves. I know at some point I will feel the itch to pick this up and because again I do have her other trilogy I think it might be interesting to read um, her words in a soldier's point of view and then switch over to something a little tiny bit more civilian volunteer. All right so these are all of the books that I picked up at the library book sale and at one two three four five six seven I do think I was decently restrained. Normally when I go to this book sale I'm either looking for something in particular or I'm just in a very book spendy mood and I end up cramming my bag like completely full to the brim. Uh, this time around I just wandered through, picked the things that really did appeal to me and then didn't didn't keep going just for the sake of accumulating more books. So I guess good for me for showing a tiny bit of restraint. If you have read any of these and you would like to provide any spoiler free thoughts in a comment below I would really appreciate that but other than that that's all I have for today so I'm gonna put this down. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you hopefully in the next video. Bye!